Some years back, I was uh, in the United States ministering, and we we left the one town, and we were in Los Angeles airport to take catch our flight to the next place. When suddenly it felt like somebody attacked me and stabbed me in the small of the back, and I remember yelling. I went ah loud, and everybody looked at me, and then it had gone. But these attacks became a little bit more frequent, and so I went to a doctor and to have a checkup, and he said, "I think you should go back home with your regular doctor." And you need to have a lot of x-rays and tests. Well, they did all that, and they discovered that I had cancer in the liver. And if you know anything about cancers, if you get in the liver, it's the most dangerous. Very few people recover from that. But Thelma and I just kept trusting the Lord and um, believing God and for a miracle. Uh, but if it was time to go, I'd go. And I remember the doctor told me, he said, Bob, you, you need to get your house in order. Well, as far as I knew, my house was in order. I didn't have anything to, what can I do? If it's my time to go, I'm going to go. Uh, but we, Thelma and I just kept quoting scriptures, quoting scriptures, quoting. We, all positive, all to do with healing. The day came and we went into, I went into the theatre and um, I came to and I was in the ward and Thelma was there and um, the doctor sat down and he said to me, look, Bob, I've got to tell you, I think you have between five and six weeks uh, to live. And you know, that's about 20 years or more ago now. Anyway, I did, when he told me that, I just turned over and went to sleep. What are you going to do? Five to six weeks, and you can't do anything more. But I was extremely hungry. But they still had me on a diet. It's amazing in hospitals. Uh, they pronounce that you're going to die, and then they proceed to make sure that you do. They leave the window open so you get pneumonia. They won't feed you so you've got no strength. Uh, it was quite incredible. But uh, as soon as I could walk a little bit, a fellow across the way in the ward, he'd been unconscious for, for a couple of days, but they were bringing him breakfast, lunch and dinner, but he's out, he can't eat. So I used to walk across and eat his lunch. And one day the, uh, the doctor came and I was out walking in the garden and they came looking for me and uh, he said to me, how are you feeling? I said, I'm feeling fine. Uh, I just want to go home now. He said, well, he, he said, you're not going the normal route that everybody else goes. He said, but you go home and uh, when the pains come back, he said, come see me and we'll give you a pain control medication and what have you. So off I went, I went home. And I suppose, I don't remember, a couple of weeks later, they decided that uh, I must have a sonogram just to see what's happening with the liver. Well, I, Mr. Wise, the surgeon, made the appointment and I arrived at the x-ray place, but I forgot to bring the, the form with me, you know, where the doctor says what he wants. But a guy Chisholm was the radiologist, and he said to me in our trench, what are you, what am I supposed to be doing with you? He said, you've got to check the liver. You know, if you can see the scar, it hasn't healed yet. Uh, they've taken two-thirds of my liver out. So he puts me on a machine, and he goes round and round. He said, you've not had a liver operation, man. I said, well, what do you think that scar is? He said, I don't know, but he said, your liver's normal. I said, that's not possible. It's not, not possible. And then I began to worry because I thought, well, maybe he's left cotton wool in or a, something in the stomach because, I, you know, what did you do the operation for? He said, never mind, I'll find your, your surgeon and I'll find out what he wants. So he went and found Roy Wise. And he came back, he said to me, get dressed 
I want you to go, and you were not here today. I never saw you. Uh, I want nothing to do with you. I, you were not here. I said, what's wrong now? He said, you were not here. I don't want anything to do with this. And off I went. I went back to, to Roy. And then Roy said to me, well, they can find nothing wrong with the liver now. He said, they say it's normal. He said, but I took two-thirds of it out. It was in my hand, he said. He said, everybody in the operating theatre knows I've taken it out. I don't operate for nothing. And so they have a little, the, the radiologist saying it hasn't been touched. This guy says he took it out. That's 20 years ago. And uh, here I am today, 20 years later. I'm still alive. I'm still talking, still working, still preaching. And it's just the goodness of God. So somebody asked me one day, well, what do you attribute that to? Well, first I say the mercy of God per first. But we also live by the word. We will not allow anything negative to be said. That's number one. Uh, we would screen people that were coming to visit us. One man from the full gospel businessmen came to visit me. And what he, in the hospital, and this is what he said to me. He said, oh, Bob, I'm so sorry to hear you got cancer of the liver because everyone who gets that dies. That's the way he... Now, he didn't know it. And another one said, I hope you uh, die with dignity. What they didn't know was I didn't want to die. I still had work to do, I felt. I was still enjoying life. So uh, we learned very quickly not to receive negative th thinking. But we've discovered something in the process. How to know when God's spoken to you. How to know which is the voice of God and which is the voice of Satan. I learned clearly the first thought that comes into your head normally is positive. And the second and third and fourth thoughts invariably is negative. So the first thought, if God gives you a thought, the devil wants to obliterate it and cover it with his stuff. So if God says, I am the Lord thy God that healeth thee of all thy diseases, then the devil will come in and say, yes, that's why Joe died and Bill died and he died and he died and he died. God didn't do that. And suddenly you've got all the negative stuff. So we learned that Thelma was outstanding with us. She... Uh, she would not allow anybody to come with anything negative. It was all positive. Uh, and somebody asked, well, did you change your lifestyle? Did you, uh, what lifestyle can you change? Uh, you can eat more carrots, you can eat more beetroot, and but, uh, that's about the only thing you could do. We just continued uh, with our normal life, except we cut down on receiving anything negative. I went over, uh, went, returned to America to, after all of this to speak, and we could not believe how many people came up to us, because I wrote a little book called Deliverer of Cancer. It's about 30 pages. How to recognize God's voice, how to recognize Satan's voice, and how to stand on first thought principles. And we met dozens of people they were healed just from that. So negative thinking destroys your cells and destroys the, your body. But positive thinking brings health. It's, you know, the, the, what, as a man thinks, so is he. Well, you start thinking positively, then you're going to become a positive person. And so my healing of liver uh, was quite incredible. When Thelma came to visit me, uh, it was about the second night or the first night, I can't recall. You know, you, they put you in a ward where you um, intensive care. And, and as she walked in with her sister, the sister said to Thelma, we can't believe it. Your, your husband is doing so well. Uh, we're going to take him out of your intensive care just now. And, and Thelma said... Uh, Praise God, it's a miracle. And I think from there on, it was a miracle. So why God didn't heal the liver in the first place, I don't know, but here I am.